The Rotary Foundation has received many applications for microcredit. Many of them are about $10,000, $20,000, and for those, the club intends to take the money and the club will itself lend the money directly to clients. <coughs> a project like that can work for a year or two, but in our experience, the Rotarians wear out after that time. There's a lot that is involved in this, and fundamentally, a small project like that is not sustainable. Now, think globally. What we want to do is we want to raise people out of poverty around the world. So we need institutions that are sustainable, that will continue to lend to hundreds and thousands of people over many years. This is why what Eric was saying about a, an organization that has capital of $250,000 reaches that break-even point where the costs and the income meet and you can begin to support the agency. Now, if that's the case, what does a Rotary Club do? One thing they can do is not be involved in microcredit. Now, don't throw stones. <laughs> here, here is what I'm thinking. The microcredit is necessary, but it's possible that the Rotary Club can be the agent that facilitates microcredit, but does not itself do the microcredit. For example, we have five microcredit institutions that are busy competing with each other in this area, but over here is a village that is not being served and the Rotarians have put a water well in there. They would like to do something more in this area. They want to provide some literacy, they want to provide some health program, and they know it needs microcredit. They can talk to these, they can talk to these five agencies, find one that they trust that fits with Rotary ideals, and say, would you come over using your capital and provide microcredit in this area while we provide the support services, we'll be a partner in development. That's one model. Another model is that the Rotary Club could secure funds by themselves or through a grant to provide capital. And in this case, they would enter into an agreement with one of these agencies, a contract for services, for professional services to administer a microcredit project in this area. And again, you have a partnership. Those are only two possible models. I'm sure there are more, but one of the things that's underlying these, you might notice, is we're not taking Rotary Foundation money and giving it to another organization. Because the trustees have said very clearly, Excuse me, can we keep the door shut because it's air conditioning and if you open it, we can't get the temperature right. I'm afraid that you are conditioning the air here. <laughs> <laughs> it's much hotter inside and outside. Thank you. So yeah. I think that... Okay, well, let's go. Okay. Be it on yet. <laughs> Yes, yeah, Steve, it, with those models you've just described, could you clarify what the potential roles of the Rotary Club in the target country as well as a Rotary Community Corps would be in facilitating those integrated services? Beautiful. The Rotary Club would retain control and supervision and probably setting policy for the, the funds that are being loaned. You don't give the money to the other agency. The trustees have made it clear that the foundation gives grants to Rotary Clubs, not to other organizations, and that money is not supposed to be further granted to another agency in, in the form of cash. All right. So you retain control of the local club. And thank you, Steve, for mentioning the Rotary Community Corps because there's this beautiful model developed by RI for a Rotary Community Corps. These are like baby Rotary Clubs out in the community. You find community leaders and you organize a Rotary Community Corps that's going to be looking at the needs of that village. And the Rotary Club <coughs> is the papa, is the, is the parent of that organization. And that Rotary Community Corps can in fact be the one that monitors right there the actions of the Rotary Thank you. Thank you very much.